Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part four of my Android development tutorial. Over the next two tutorials, we are going to cover radio buttons, radio groups, checkboxes, drop downs or spinners, buttons, chronometers, change listeners, item selected listeners, and on click listeners, and a whole bunch of other things. So, I have a lot to do, so let's get into it. Okay, in the last part of the tutorial, we created this crazy tip calculator, and these are going to be all the different things I am going to be adding to it over the course of this tutorial and the next tutorial. So, of course, we've already covered text views, edit views, spinners, and a whole bunch of different listeners. Well, we're going to cover a whole bunch of other listeners along with all of these other different things. And if you don't know what this is, this is a drop down box or a spinner. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to model what's here on the left side of the screen on the right side of the screen. And all the code is available to link underneath the video. And what I'm going to be playing with is the activity XML file, the strings XML file, and then the crazy tip calc.java file. So basically the first thing I need to do is go into graphical layout for the activity XML file. It's called activity crazy tip calc because that's what I called it in the last part of the tutorial. And then basically what I want to do is just put all of these different pieces in over here. So the very first thing I'm going to need to do, I'm going to try to zoom in here in a weird way so you can sort of see what's going on. I'm going to first come in here and put introduction in there and all these other different things. Well that basically means I need to go into strings.xml and define them first. So I'm just going to grab a whole bunch of these guys and I'm going to give them names that make sense. So I'm going to go something like intro text view and then I'm going to call this introduction just like you see right there. So all these different words I'm going to define them over in my strings.xml file. So let's make a whole bunch more of these and here I'm going to need to define all of my checkboxes. So I'm going to call this something like intro friendly text view and here we're just going to check if our waiter or waitress was friendly. Might as well just paste these in here. Then we're going to check did they remind us of the specials that were available and then I'm just going to put specials. If you can't see this view at full screen it's a 1080p video and did they offer their opinion on the different things that I asked for. I don't know I'm just guessing here I'm just making up a whole bunch of things just so I have something to grade the waitress on. Okay, and then after I have that defined, I'm going to set up everything that I need for my radio buttons. And the first thing we're going to check is their availability whenever we needed them to do something for us. So just change that to availability, paste that in there, and then I'm going to say bad radio button, and then just copy that down here, and then we'll go OK or good depending upon how available they were. And then for these, I'm just going to change it to bad, OK, and good, of course. Now I'm going to do the same thing for my chronometer. And the chronometer is going to allow me to come in here and actually take note of how long I have to wait for service. Like I said, I'm just making up a bunch of different ways to grade my server. I definitely don't mean to be mean, and if you're wondering, I normally give good tips. So being forced to be mean in this situation. And then we're going to do start chronometer button. And then we're going to define a whole bunch of buttons to start, pause, and reset the chronometer, which is just a little timer. And then just change that to start, pause, and reset. And then for the spinner, this guy right here, what we need to define for that, we're going to be doing this in slightly a different way. We're going to actually need to define this like a list. So this is going to be string dash array name and then I'm going to call this problem solving like that and then change this to string array. Get rid of this reset and then inside of this we're going to go item and we're going to put all of our items. So if I want this to just be problem solving I'm going to put it like that and then the next item I'm going to keep this real simple. I'm going to say bad, okay and good again. And there we are. That's all the resources I need because that is all the text that we have here. So now what I got to do is save that and then go into the activity XML file and start creating everything. And I'm going to trust you that you can see this good enough just so that I can keep this all nice and tight. So the very first thing I'm going to do of course is grab a little text view and drag it down inside of here. And then I'm going to put introduction inside of it. And to do that, here's my text view right here. And then for this guy, I'm going to call this intro text view. Get rid of that part. Click over here and click on yes. And here for the actual text, I'm going to click in here and then come over here and look for intro text view. And now that's going to say introduction. There we are. The next thing I need to do is get all my check boxes here on the screen. And to do that, I'm just going to grab some check boxes and throw them on the screen here. 
So there's one, and I'm going to do these one by one, and I'm going to call this friendly checkbox. Click on yes, click on OK, and then come in here to the checkbox area, and of course it's going to be intro friendly text view, and you can see that it now shows up. And then I'm going to grab another checkbox, drag it on the screen, come back over here, and then this guy is going to be specials checkbox. Click over here, click on yes, click on OK. And then for the text, just go intro, specials, text view, and then change to specials. And then come here and grab another checkbox, throw it on the screen, come over here, call this opinion checkbox. Click here, click yes, click OK. And then here for the text, it's just going to be intro, opinion, and there we go. Now I got all my checkboxes all set up. Now the next thing I need to do is set up availability and then I'm going to have to create a radio group and then put a bunch of radio buttons inside of it. So availability is going to be very easy. I'm just going to drag a text view down here. Come over here. I'm going to say available text view. Get rid of that. Click yes. Click OK. Click this. Available text view. And now we have that all set up. That now says availability. Well now if I want a grouping of radio buttons what I need to do is come down here and this is a radio group. And I'm going to grab it and just throw it in there. I know we don't want it to be set up this way. So if we want it to be horizontal, we just need to come over here to orientation, click on that, change this to horizontal, click on OK. And there we go. Now we got a horizontal one. Now I actually prefer whenever I'm playing around with this not to edit everything over there. I'm actually going to come down into the raw XML file and edit everything. It's a lot easier for you to read as well. And then this is going to be set for true by default, which is perfectly fine. And then I'm going to name all of these different names. So for radio group, I'm going to knock that one off of there. And I'm going to change this to available radio group. Don't need to change anything else there unless you want to. And then for the radio button, I'm going to put available radio. And then for the first one, I'm going to put bad. And I'm going to copy that, paste that in there, call this OK. And then for this radio button, paste it in there as well. And here I'm going to say good. So I've got all those set. Jump back over into the graphical layout. And these don't have the right names on them, so I have to go in there and correct that. So the first one we got is text, and this is going to be bad. So available, bad radio button. And now that's set right. And then we'll come into this one. And this is going to be OK, available, OK radio button. Got that set. Click on this. Come back over here, click on that, and this one's going to be good radio button. So there we are, got all those set up. Now what I need to do is come in here and set up my spinner. Now for the spinner, that's this weird thing right here. We're just going to grab it and drag it down here and drop it in somewhere. I know it looks really weird and I'm going to resize it a little bit. Then for this guy, I'm going to come over here, change the ID for this, and I'm going to call this Problems Spinner. Get rid of that. Of course, hit yes. And that's just updating the R Java file. That's all that's doing. And there we got that set up. And also with working with spinners, I like to just go in here and mess around with the raw stuff we got here. So here is our spinner. Problem spinner, all that's fine. And everything else is okay. We just have to point to this guy that we created, this string array right here. So come in here. And to do that, we go Android. And we type in entries is equal to. And here we're going to put at array problem solving. And that's going to grab that array and put it inside of there for us. And that just leaves us with this text view, the chronometer, and these three buttons. So go into text view again, drag it down here, throw this in here somewhere, come over here, give it a name, and I'm going to call this time waiting text view. Click, of course, hit yes and hit OK. And then over here for the text, that's going to be time waiting text view. And there we go, time waiting for service. So now what we need to do is put the chronometer inside of there. And that is down here under time and date. And there's chronometer. And it's a little feller. Just going to throw that in there right there. And I'm not going to do a whole lot with it. Well, I got to select it first. I'm going to come in here and call that time waiting chronometer. Capitalize that. And that's really there just so I can use it in the code easily. And then we need to get our three buttons. Start, pause, and reset. And that is up inside of form widgets. And this time I'm just going to grab this small button here. It doesn't matter. Both buttons work the same, just look a little bit different. And actually, I'm just going to grab all three of them here right in a row. And they're going to resize depending upon the text that's inside of them. And they're also going to line up themselves. Okay, so I can just select that. And I'm going to call this Start Chronometer button. Click out of here. Click Yes. Click OK, of course. And then in the text that comes up, click there. And Start Chronometer button. And now I gotta get this button, which is gonna be pause. Change this to pause.
chronometer a button click on that click yes click OK and that's pause chronometer button and you can see that's fixed and then finally we got to do reset and then under text click over here and finally reset chronometer button so we go we just created our whole entire interface so I can get rid of this guy and we have everything set up so now basically I just need to go into crazy tip calc and initialize all those components all together so here we are in crazytipcalc.java and I'm just going to come down here into this area and the very first thing I want to do here is as I'm checking off all these things I'm going to keep track of them so what I'm going to do is I'm going to sum all the totals for all the radio buttons check boxes and all these different things and I'm going to create a private int integer array and I'm going to call it checklist values and just understand I'm not doing everything here in any way to optimize things because I'm trying to show you 50 million different things and make it understandable and sometimes optimizing things makes things less understandable so we're gonna have that then and what I want to do is declare all my checkboxes so I'm gonna go checkbox friendly and if you're wondering what I have sitting in front of me it is strings.xml this is what I did so after I have all those different things set up inside of here I print out strings.xml and then I write all this code from it so we're gonna go checkbox and I have three checkboxes and the first one is friendly next one is specials and then finally we have opinion okay so we got all those set up declared or whatever after I get the checkboxes all set up I now want to do the radio group and that's just available radio group and that is just this stuff right here well, let's just click down here inside of this see available radio group this is where all this different stuff is coming from and then I'm gonna do the same thing for radio button available bad radio then I'm going to do the same thing for all the other ones and this is going to be OK radio and this is going to be good radio now I want to do my spinner so I'm going to go spinner call this the problem spinner Then I need to declare all my buttons you just do that by typing in button start chronometer button and this is going to be pause button and this is going to be reset and then I'm going to need to declare my chronometer just chronometer and I'm going to call it time waiting chronometer and then what I'm also going to do with this is I'm actually going to log the number of seconds in this situation in the real world you would use minutes if you were trying to track the performance of a waitress but so that we can actually see results when we run the code and stuff I'm actually only going to give my waitress 10 seconds to get me my meal just understand that's just something that I'm doing because this is a video tutorial and we can't afford to wait 10 minutes as it does its stuff and I might want to do something with the text view for the thermometer. I'm, I'm not certain about that yet, but it's not going to hurt anything just to declare this. So I'm just going to call that time waiting text view. And now inside of on create, what we're going to do is initialize all these things. So I'll just keep coming down here. And I'm going to come back to the very, very end of this. And so I don't spell anything wrong. I'm actually going to copy these guys. Come down inside of here again. Paste that in there. Get rid of this and get rid of this and then inside of this to initialize it we need to have to go check box and then we're going to go find view by id and we get the id from the r java file and this guy is going to be friendly checkbox so I just scroll through here rather than typing that out friendly checkbox and there it is and there we go and then to save myself an insane amount of time I'm just going to copy that paste that in paste that in these are all check boxes and here I just need to go specials and then here I just need to go opinion and there we are got that set and then what I'm gonna do is set up all of my listeners for this stuff and I'm gonna cover that in the next part of the tutorials so I'm just gonna call this setup intro check boxes and I'll just do that in the next part of the tutorial then we're gonna have to set up all of our radio buttons so again I'm gonna come up here so I don't make uh, any types of mistakes actually I'm gonna do it for the radio buttons and the radio group of course back down inside of here paste that in there okay so we have the radio group and it's gonna be pretty much the same as this I just need to change a little bit so for radio group paste that in there of course change this to radio group instead of radio button or checkbox whatever it was and then inside of that click back available radio group is right there so there we are got that set up copy that again do the same thing here for the radio button and here I'm just gonna knock the group part off of this and then I'm gonna put available bad radio copy that paste that in there this is going to be available I think it's uppercase okay didn't get an error good and then for this one it's going to be good radio button 
File save. Good. Then after I have all that set up, what I'm going to need to do next time is put some change listeners. So I'm going to call this add change listeners to radio. Radios, multiple. Don't really have to do anything for the radio group that time. I want to initialize my spinner or my drop down box. For some reason, that's what they call it in the Android world. Is equal to, paste that in there, spinner. And this is called problems spinner. And then I'm going to have to, of course, add another item selected listener to my spinner to find out what item was selected. And I'm going to do that in a separate method that we're going to cover as well in the next part of the tutorial. And I'm going to call it item selected listener to spinner. A little bit long winded, but I like it being descriptive. And then I want to initialize all my buttons. So start chronometer button is going to be equal to, paste that in there, change this to button, and then put a dot there. And look for a start chronometer button. Where is it? Come over here in the activity XML file, make sure I have it set up. And I do have it set up. I think I know what happened though. And yes, I was right. I just didn't have that file saved. So start chronometer button. And then do the same thing for pause chronometer button. And reset chronometer button. And then I'm just going to call this pause and reset. And there we are. Now all the buttons are initialized. And then again, in the next part of the tutorial, I'm going to show you how to handle click listeners. And there are those are. And then finally, I need to initialize my chronometer, which is just a little timer. That's all it is. Sounds really fancy, but just takes seconds and minutes and all that stuff. And I'm going to copy this chronometer, put a period, and look for time waiting chronometer. And there that is. And then finally, like I said, I haven't decided if I'm going to do anything with the text view that is next to the chronometer or not. So for now, I'm going to come in here and initialize it, just in case. Put a dot, and then time waiting text view. And file save. So there you go. There is 50 million different things you can do inside of Android. In the next part of the tutorial, I will completely solve everything, and you will have a completely insane looking app. Leave any questions or comments below. Otherwise, till next time.